Hi, in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Comcast case management to create a case property and then use a follow-up form that will update um, the case property and change it accordingly. Um, so um, let's take a look at this overview in Millinote and then um, hopefully it will be a little more clear before we jump right into um, the actual hands-on within Comcare HQ. So first things first. We have a case property, think of a, in this red uh, box here, um, and we're going to track uh, the status. So for now, we're just going to assume that, um, well, all case properties start with a null value. So if you create a case property, it will be um, null, and then we'll show you how to, and I'll show you how it actually creates it within um, uh, the registration as well as the follow form. So what happens is that within the registration form, we're going to we're going to code what the what the status property will be within the case property. So within the registration form, we will have a field um, that we'll call status. We'll code it as applicant. Oh, sorry, apologies for that. Um, um, and what happens is that when you submit this form, it could be based on logic saying if they are over 18, become an applicant. So um, we'll do some logic built into the form itself. But essentially, it's best to probably use a hidden value that tracks the status um, and then we'll say applicant. And then when you submit the form, what will happen is that when you submit the form, it's gonna basically go ahead um, and turn this null value, let's strike it out, into, oh, maybe we'll do a little tracking of the history. Null, it'll become, Applicant, um, so maybe we don't. So, so that's what's going to happen is that submission of the form will create, the, will update the case property called status to applicant from null, and then what will happen is that in a follow-up form, we're going to go ahead and basically pull. Oh, that did not work. So let's go ahead and go at like that, um, and then switch it so that. Um, what happens is that registration writes applicant, and then this a follow-up form will pull it, pull the status, and then maybe it turns from applicant to selected, and then it will basically go back again from here. We're going to show you how to. I'm going to show. <laughs> we'll show you how to um, turn selected to change this from applicant to then selected. Um, hope that's clear. Um, okay, well, um, let's go ahead and jump right into the case management and then I will build out a form quickly and then maybe even fast forward this section on the video. What I'll go ahead and do is create a case list and then so we can fast forward this um, pretty straightforward. Okay, so what we went ahead and did it was create a registration form, capture name, date, and then a status, um, and then we'll submit this. And then we'll what we'll show you is creating the um, mapping this to the case property, which is super important. Um, so we'll do it. We'll go ahead and go do that. Okay, so. Um, Oh, actually, it's under here. Um, we're going to use the name to register the case property. And then now we're going to track um, a status. Um, status is a saved uh, property within Comcare, so we cannot use that. So we have to go to client. We're going to call it client status. So what we've gone ahead and done was is um, create this status right here in case property and the registration. Um, so 
The question is the follow up. Let's go ahead. Uh, this uh, this is the follow up form. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm um, up nested and create this thing. So let's fast forward and then I'll talk you through it. Now that we've gone and created this uh, follow-up form, um, what you notice is that I created a few things here that will happen is that status will be um, default pulling from the case property. So we'll pull this into this field. And then if you change that, it will update the status. And then now we just have to redo the writing back to the case property itself. So we do that under the case uh, settings here. So here under the follow-up form, we're going to go ahead and say, what do we need to update? We need to update the status to be client status. So now, just to keep in mind that this is now called client status because it turns out you cannot use a status as the name. So now we've done that. Let's go ahead and take a look at if this works. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> first go, best go. All right. So you do a case list, you do a registration form. Um, I'm going to call this Tony, today's date, and then I'm going to say applicant. Go ahead. And well, actually, before I do that, well, let's go ahead and submit and see what happens. So if we go home, we, oh wait, apologies, apologies. Um, So, so we do a case list, we do a follow-up form, we select this person, but we don't know anything about this person. So let's go ahead and display what the status is. So um, under this case management, we're going to go ahead and do case list name, and then let's go ahead and put the, what we've captured within the system, which is date opened. Let's put in the date opened, um, and then client status, right? And then we can watch how this plays out. Um, and now it should track um, its applicant, right? So let's go ahead and select this and then update this applicant's profile. So we say, ah, you see this? This is, I messed up here. So let's go ahead and um, this should only show up if they say update status. So it's a more of a um, UI user-centered design process. So let's go make this display property um, has selected this. I, I like having checkboxes to reveal things within for the user. So that way, uh, default is always only things you need to see. So go ahead and create the follow up. We've created a follow up form. We select this applicant. We want to update them to become selected. So this is your follow up form, update status. Um, this is the default value that it is. We're going to select selected. But, um, and then what will happen is that we're going to try, it's going to recode status to select it and then when we submit it's going to write to the case property and you can check that with that, this little nifty little thing here so this form hidden value from is going to change to selected so if we had selected applicant you can see that it's going to say applicant which will mean it'll rewrite the case property with the same property because it's that's the default value in selected but quickly before I, I, I refresh a new one um, I'm going to do a count selected validation rule so that we cannot have um, means count the number selected within this question to be only equal to one meaning you can only select one um, so we'll show that in a little bit so we go ahead and submit complete and what we should see is that when we follow up with this person it's become selected so let's go ahead and select this person again say you want to update their you create another form, you update their status, see it's selected, and then we switch to applicant. But if we go ahead and refresh, we can go ahead and to see this new update. So follow up, um, update status, go ahead and say, if you do this, you cannot have more than one, okay. 
and then we go ahead and submit. And then now you can see the back to applicant. So what happens is that ComCare will track every form submission so you can see the history. The client status in the case property is what is currently, it can only store one value at a time. But the form that track that writes to it, um, I'll show you here, this form will have multiple entries so you see the history, so you can roll back every time it was changed. Um, however, the case property will only show you what the, the current status is. So that is, um, so that is how you update um, the case property and how to dynamically change that. So you create the registration that will create the case property, then you update the, the case property. And what you want to do is use the default value within, you see here, this is the case. Use the default value to bring it into, and then that will show you what it is. Something to keep in mind is that case, uh, it's case sensitive, so it's really important that if you if you had with if you store, uh, um, say if you store um, pending in the case that in the status, and you try to pull that into the default value, ComCare will call an error because a default pending is not a value within here. So you would need to build this to include pending, including how it's spelled in the choice value. Um, so that's something to think about. But other than that, um, that's how you do it. And then if you wanted to store, we can talk about um, the next question later on. But for now, this is how you create a case property within the registration form and then update the case property through a follow-up form. So I'll stop it there and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.